Ephesians chapter number one. Okay. I had to make sure I was on. And last week we discussed a Bible word, and it was the word called regeneration. Regeneration means to be made alive. That's where we get our phrase to be born again. Somebody says, I am a born again, again Christian. That means they've been regenerated. That is a Bible word, and you ought to know what that is and what it means. Today, I want to look at the word redemption. What does it mean? What does it mean to us? In, in Ephesians chapter number 1, and let's look about verse number 3. If you're there, say amen. amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It sure is good to be in Christ, isn't it? According as he hath chosen us. When do you get chosen? In him. Before the foundation of the world, you can't get chosen before you get in him. you got to get in him first. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now notice what verse 4 says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and, or excuse me, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. It is sure is good to be accepted, isn't it? Now notice what this verse says. Here's our word, here's our word. In whom, this is verse 7, in whom we have what? Redemption. How do we get redemption? Through his blood. The forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Now, I know a lot of the modern versions, they will leave out this one phrase. They have, in whom we have redemption, and they leave out through his blood. Ladies and gentlemen, if you leave out through his blood, we have no redemption. The only way to have redemption is through his blood. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning for allowing us to be here. I ask you to bless the reading of your word. Lord, bless us the next few minutes as we study this word redemption, the meaning of this word redemption. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Even over in Colossians 1.14, it says some of the same phrases. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. You cannot have forgiveness of sin unless you go through the blood. You cannot have redemption unless you go through his blood. It's always been by the blood. It always has been by the blood and always will be. By the blood. That word redemption occurs in your Bible 159 times, so it must be important. How does God bring us to himself? It's through the process of the work of redemption. Uh, redeemed. We sing that song. What is it? Redeemed. How I love to proclaim him. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child, and forever. I am. Over there in Romans 3 and 24, it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in who? Christ Jesus. We owed a debt we could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. And that's how we got this redemption that we call salvation. And boy, it sure is a great thing. Redemption means to purchase to buy back something that originally belonged to the purchaser. Boy, we're going somewhere with that. Hallelujah. Redemption is the foundation of salvation. In some of those other uh, words, or the word, the word we used last week, regeneration, uh, to be made alive, to be born again. And we went to John chapter 3. You must be born again. And here is another salvation word, redemption, to means to be purchased, to buy back something that originally belonged to the purchaser. God could not decree. He could not just snap his fingers. Even though God can do anything he wants to, God could not decree and just snap his fingers and make salvation come to all men. He had to buy it. It had to be bought, and it had to be bought through blood. 
That's how it had to come. Uh, the first time this word uh, redemption is mentioned is over in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament in Genesis 48, Jacob gets all of his boys and he talks to them about how the nation of Israel has been redeemed. You know how the nation of Israel redeemed? Remember this. The nation of Israel was in Egyptian bondage. They were slaves to the Egyptians. They were taskmasters. And uh, they were in that Egyptian bondage. And they cried out to God for God to send them a deliverer. They sent Moses that way. Moses walked in there and said, Pharaoh, you let my people go. And if you don't, God is going to be very upset. And ten plagues later, there had to be the death of the firstborn. In Exodus chapter number 12, God says, you kill the lamb, you cut its throat, you take the blood, you put it on the side post and upon the door post, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. The nation of Israel were free from Egyptian bondage that night. They crossed the Red Sea, went over into the promised land. They were redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Now, that may not do much for you, but ladies and gentlemen, if it works for the nation of Israel, it works for the church in the New Testament. How does the church get redeemed? It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. I was told about a boy, and I would say this boy was probably 12, 13 years old, and he got into woodworking, and woodworking was something that he enjoyed doing, working with his hands, and so may, he made himself one of those boats. And boy, he really put a lot of time and a lot of work into that thing and made that boat. Matter of fact, he turned the boat over and carved his initials in the bottom of that boat so he would know, that is my boat. And he took that boat out into the stream. And he wanted to see if that thing would float. And boy, he picked that thing and it was floating. And boy, he played around with that thing and all of a sudden the current picked up. And the current picked up and followed, and that boat took off. And that boy chased after that boat and lost that boat down the river somewhere. And it was a couple of years later. This boy was going downtown and he looked in the window and he stopped and he said, that looks just like my boat. He goes into that toy store and he goes up to that owner. He says, where'd you get that boat? He said, well, somebody come in here and found it somewhere and brought it in here. I gave them good money for it and now I'm trying to sell it. That boy said, well, sir, if you will look on the bottom, you'll find my initials right there and that's my boat. I lost that boat. And the owner says, well, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but if you want that boat, you're going to have to buy it again. And that boy had to fork over money and buy his own boat again. Now, some of you don't know where I'm going, but watch this. There was a time back in the Garden of Eden when God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And God put his image stamped on the bottom of Adam. That's mine. Adam fell and destroyed the whole thing by sin. And God, and excuse me, Adam lost, lost that image that he once had. And several years later, uh, 4,000 years later, Jesus Christ had to come back. And he says, that's mine. Amen. And the devil says, well, look, if you want it, you're going to have to buy it again. Amen. So God has to send his only begotten son down to this world to die for something that he already bought and paid for. He had to die and buy and pay for it again to redeem it, to buy back from the original purchaser. That's what the process of redemption is all about. Thank the Lord that I am redeemed. You know, there's a verse over there in Psalm 107 and verse 2. I don't have it up there for you, but Psalm 107 verse 2 says this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, the rest of that verse says, Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That's the rest of that verse. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Boy, we've been redeemed, snatched from the hand of the enemy, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes um, we do this and we don't do it enough and we should do it more. But sometimes we say, all right, if somebody got a word of testimony, not testimony, 
a testimony. Now, some people, they get off on, on something, and it's, it just becomes a lot of blown. When you want a testimony, you say, hey, this is when I got saved. This is when I got redeemed. This is when I, you know, we don't care when you stubbed your toe last and when the last time you, uh, you know, had to blow your nose and all that kind of good stuff. That's all good to hear and all that. Well, we won't know when you got saved. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so because he hath redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's why we sing the song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. Now, who instituted this redemption plan? Who designed this thing we call redemption? Well, I'll tell you, it come from God Almighty. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, when somebody needed to be purchased, when land needed to be claimed, bought back, delivered, set free, God says you have to do it through the process of redemption. So in the Old Testament, you could buy land, you could buy labor, you could buy uh, an inheritance. Let's just say this. Let's just say your father, he passed away and left you an inheritance that was in debt. And you didn't have money to buy that inheritance out of debt. So the government would come in and take over that unless. Unless you could find somebody kin. Unless you could find somebody willing. Unless you could find somebody with the means. Somebody could come in and buy that inheritance for you. Hallelujah. I know where I'm going. And I'm going to get excited on my own preaching. Hallelujah. But in the Old Testament, that's what it was all about. Uh, you, you could find somebody that had the means, that was willing, that could purchase and was kin. And you could buy that back. Why? Because daddy didn't do it right. So somebody's got to come in and buy all oh, you saying, oh, what are you talking about? You, hey, I think all of us, all of us go back to Daddy Adam. And how many of y'all know he didn't do it right? He left us an inheritance that was left owing a big debt that we couldn't pay. And so the only way for us to get that inheritance is for us to find somebody kin. Mm. The only way is to find somebody that was willing and find somebody that had the means to buy it back. Oh, hallelujah. I'm feeling Pentecostal this morning. I don't know what happened. And so the Lord Jesus Christ comes 4,000 years later, says, I'm kin. I'm kin to the first Adam. I have the means. I have the blood running through my veins. And I'm willing I think the Bible says not that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, he's not willing that any should perish. So he's willing. He's able. He's got the means. He's got, uh, he's got the kinship. And Jesus Christ came uh, and he bought back. Why? Because daddy didn't do it right. Uh, and so if you trust Jesus Christ, uh, you get all that inheritance back uh, plus a whole lot more. You can't beat it with a stick. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, you say, now listen, do you have any examples in the Bible of this thing called redemption? Boy, I'm glad you ask. Boy, that'll give me plenty of time. You know, there was a, there was a story in the Bible. It's found in the book of Ruth. Ruth was a Gentile. Ruth was a Gentile. She married a Jewish husband. Her Jewish husband died and left Ruth and her mother-in-law, who had a Jewish husband, and boy, they left that family in a mess. Boy, when they died, that inheritance was in a mess. And Naomi, her mother-in-law, said, Ruth, you know, I'm sorry of all this. All I know you do is go back to your homeland where you come from. I don't know. We're in a fix here. And Ruth says, well, I ain't going nowhere. Wherever you go, I'm going. 
Wherever you die, I'm going to die. Wherever you go to church, I'm going to church. Whoever your God is, that's who my God's going to be. And Naomi said, well, there ain't but one way to fix this. We need to find somebody kin. We need to find somebody that's got a lot of moolah. And somebody that is willing to buy all of our debt of, an, of our inheritance. And Ruth says, well, I don't know of anybody right yet, but hey, we'll just, we'll just find out what the Lord's got. She says, I'm going to go down there and glean in the barley fields. Now, the way they did in the Old Testament, the way they did in the Old Testament, them farmers, they'd have that rectangular shaped field or a square field or whatever. And so when them, when them farmers, they would come to that corner, they would cut the corner. And those corners, there'd be four corners in that man's field uh, that he would leave uncut. And that was for the widows and the orphans to come get it. It wasn't welfare, it was workfare. If you want it, come get it. If you don't, stay home and starve. We ain't cutting it and bringing it to you. Somebody help me. America needs to hear that. Hallelujah. We don't mind helping you, but we're going to leave the corner. You come get it if you want it. Cut it yourself. Grind that thing. Make your own bread. If you're going to lay up on the couch and watch soap operas all day, we ain't bringing you nothing. Starve. Boy, I feel like preaching right there. That's in the Bible now. It don't fit America theology, but it is Bible. And so Ruth goes down there, and she starts gleaning in those cut corners that was for the widows and orphans. Why? She ain't got no money. That was for her. And so she's down there gleaning. And old Boaz, Boaz is a Jew. He's in that John Deere tractor. And he's driving. He's driving that John Deere tractor. And all of a sudden, he does one of these. He adjusts his rear view mirror. Make sure his hair is good. And he makes him another loop. He pulls up beside old Ruth. He says, hey. What's your name? <laughs> it's all in there. You got to read it. It's just in, it's what it means in the Hebrew. <laughs> and she said, oh, you don't want anything to do with me. I'm one of them Moabite girls, one of them Gentile girls. He said, well, and, he, and, and Boaz accidentally dropped his cell phone out of the tractor. <laughs> Ruth bent over to pick it up, and he says, hey, before you give that back to me, just put your number in there. It's in there. Somewhat. <laughs> and boy, old Ruth put her number in that phone. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Y'all getting a picture? And Boaz says, I tell you what, I'm willing. And matter of fact, I'm kin. I'm in the line of the kinship. And I've got the means. And Boaz bought back Ruth's inheritance and gave her back more, more than what she lost through the inheritance because a Jewish boy, because a Jewish boy found a Gentile bride that he loved with all of his heart. You say, what's that got to do with us? Well, I'm going to tell you. There was a, there was a, 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 a group of people that was born on the outside on the wrong side of the covenant. We were outcast on the wrong side of the covenant. And God sent his only begotten son. His son comes down here and he says, you know what? I love those folks. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we said, Lord, you don't want anything to do with us. I'm low down, dirty, rot. He says, that's just who I want I'll buy back what you lost through Adam. I'll give you that and a whole lot more. Give you a mansion in heaven to live forever, rent free. Don't have to pay nothing. It's yours for free. You can't beat a deal like that. To the process of redemption to be set free. You say, is there another story? Well, I got another one because it ain't but 15 to 20. If I, if I quit right now, y'all would fire me and get another preacher. They couldn't preach no longer than that. Some of you going, oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> Let me give you one more story. There is a story in the Old Testament by a preacher by the name of Hosea. Hosea, in the Old Testament, 
And uh, he wanted, uh, was looking for a bride. God says, well, Hosea, you go down to the slave market. And down there on the slave market, they're, uh, they're selling uh, uh, folks down there enslaved. And you'll find you one. And, and Hosea's like, well, Lord, you sure that a preacher needs to be seen down there? Yeah, I mean, you, you don't know what the community might say. You know the community might say something. Surely they might put it on Facebook. If they see me, they'll snap a picture. And there will be. He says, you go down there. I've got a plan and I've got a purpose. Hosea goes down there and they're auctioning off these, uh, these women and, and men too. They're auctioning off both. And, and uh, all of a sudden, there comes up a, a, a young lady. She looks like, man, she's been enslaved She's been beat down. Uh, she don't look like much at all. Matter of fact, in the Old Testament, men that were sold uh, went for 20 pieces of silver. Ladies, get ready to shout. Get ready to shout right on fixed teeth. <laughs> men would go for 20 pieces of silver. Y'all remember the story of Joseph in the Old Testament? So his brother sold him for 20 pieces of silver. That was a going rate for a man. And that was in a man in good shape now. You know, that didn't have one of these. Good shape, okay? <laughs> no comments now. But a woman, a woman in good shape would go for 30 pieces of silver. Ladies, let me try it again. Ladies, a lady in good shape would go for 30 pieces of silver. Men, I'm telling you. Li listen, it, the Bible, we got Bible on it. You ladies are worth more than men. <laughs> and the men are going, don't tell them that. <laughs> I said all that to say this to keep your attention, number one. But number two, there was a lady by the name of Gomer. They brought Gomer up, and boy, she looked like a mess. Matter of fact, she was such a mess, they were selling her for 15 pieces of silver, half price. It was pitiful sight. They started the auction. You know how they do. Would somebody give me five, ten, 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 you know, all that stuff, you know. Nobody was bidding. Nobody was bidding. It was a sad situation. It appeared that nobody wanted her. Hosea's looking. And he says, I'll give you 15 and raise you 15. Amen. And the auctioneer says, well, she's just going for 15. He says, I'm going to give you the 15 and I'm going to raise it 15 more. They said, she ain't worth 30. He said, she is to me. <laughs> she is to me. She may not be worth much to this whole world, but she means it to me. And, and, uh, and you know, Gomer's like this, got her head down, just beat down like this. And they said, going once, going twice, sold to the preacher man, Hosea. Yeah. He walks up to old Gomer. Gomer says, well, I appreciate what you did. What do you want need me to do? I'll be your servant. Old Gomer, or Hosea, reaches in his pocket, picks out his pocket knife, undoes, it, undoes it, ropes. <laughs> And says, you ain't got to do nothing. Amen. You're free. Amen. Whom the Son sets free, he's free indeed. <laughs> he's free indeed. Amen. Gomer says, you mean to tell me, can I go home? Well, yeah, you can go home, but you don't have to serve me if you don't want. Hey, God won't make you serve him. Amen. Not if you don't want to. But if you don't want to, there's something wrong with you want to. So you need to get your want to back saved again. Anybody that would do that for you, yes, I want to serve him. Not because I have to, because I want to. Set her free. And they went home together. Hallelujah. Not as a slave, but as a servant. I think the Bible says we've been bought with a price. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. The devil had us enslaved in sin. Enslaved in bondage of sin, 
And the Lord Jesus Christ came and said, I'll give you half price and raise you more. I'll give you more than what he's worth. Why? Because he's worth it to me. The church of the living God, it was worth every penny to the Lord Jesus Christ. When he died on that cross, that's what redemption is all about. You say, is there any other thing in the Bible about redemption? Yes, and I don't know that I have time to deal with it. But over in Ephesians, I think it's up there, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Ephesians 4 and verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. We ain't done yet. <laughs> yes, I have been redeemed. My soul you do know your three parts, body, soul, spirit. My soul and spirit has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But there's coming a day when the Lord's going to redeem me, my body, out of this world. And go, snatch it up. Snatch it up. You feel trapped in this world? Oh, just hang on. We're fixing to get redeemed up out of here. Redeemed, sealed unto the day of redemption. That means I'm his and he is mine. I've been bought with a price. I'm saved, sealed, sanctified, bought by the blood, put in Christ, baptized into his sweet Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, sealed unto the day of redemption. And let me just say this, sealed means sealed. Now, amen. Sealed means sealed. And I'm going that way. The process of redemption, to buy back. To buy back and to buy that from the original, from the original purchaser. Isn't that something? How God would love us so much that he would redeem us. Last week he regenerated us. This week he's redeeming us by his very own blood have you been redeemed heavenly father i thank you lord this morning for lord just being able to say we are redeemed thank you for setting us free thank you for making us whole thank you for forgiving us even the forgiveness of sins lord we sure do thank you god right now in the still of the moment if somebody in here don't know you if they don't know you from the free pardon of sin, Lord, I pray they'd fall on their knees and ask you to save them today before it's everlasting too late. God will thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Won't you stand to your feet all of the building? Just a few minutes if you need to come. Just for a minute. Jesus did pay it all. You don't know a thing. It's free. It's free.